At the start of 10.2, we made a prediction video for the meta of Season 3. Since then, hot fixes have come in, four sets have been obtained, and some classes that we predicted would rule the lands have plummeted to the depths of unviability. So join us today as we guide you through the current winners and losers of today's meta with information gathered from our network of AWC winners and solo shuffle champions. Before we start, be sure to check out skillcap.com. Everything at Skillcap is backed by a rating gain guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the links below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. First, we're going to kick it off with the caster winners, which honestly, we predicted pretty well, with both Destruction and Demonology coming out on top. Even with the plethora of nerfs that Demonology has been hit with, like a lower casting speed, a nerf to their tier set, and a 10% nerf to their fell guard, they are still holding their own in Solo Shuffle and are greatly improved from being one of the worst casters in the game in Season 2. This is largely due to their newfound high consistent damage profile and Felguard's Mortal Strike that allows them to slowly chip down the other team, along with their burst being on a 1 minute cooldown, meaning they can have frequent offensive momentum and steamroll over the opponent. And if that's not enough, the armor buff that all lock specs received in patch 10.2 is allowing them to play far more aggressively into melees. Demonology doesn't tend to have a bad lobby at the moment and can pair itself with almost anything, earning its spot in the S tier. Similarly, Destruction Warlocks are also holding it down in the S tier due to their ability to work with any class thanks to their high burst and sustained damage, along with a recent hotfix to their force set making their dimensional rifts even more deadly than before. As we predicted in our last video, the madness of as a cure removal did turn into a net buff for PvP, allowing for far harder chaos bolts and even returning Shadowburn to its former glory. Right now, a skilled destruction can win in almost any lobby, although they do still struggle with melee heavy lobbies on maps where Demonic Circle can't be effectively utilized, such as Ruins of Lordaeron. Destro will be seeing a mix of damage nerfs and buffs in December 19th hotfixes, but we highly doubt this will affect their overall standing in either direction as one of the best casters in the game. Moving on, our last S tier ranged are Beast Mastery Hunters who have climbed up from the A tier. Despite receiving nerfs and hotfixes almost every week for the past month, BM Hunters are still dealing absurd amounts of damage to cloth, leather, and male users, allowing them to crush a large majority of lobbies. Just like Demonology Warlock, Beast Mastery's strength comes from its high consistent damage, coupled with its mortal strike effect, allowing it to pair with just about any class in the game. The way Beast Mastery deals damage is also fantastic for Shuffle, as they can avoid damage while their pets do most of the work, making them a prime specialization for those longer, dampening attrition games. Now, there's one more ranged winner this patch that has really caught everyone off guard. Moving all the way up to the A tier from the depths of the C tier are Devastation Evokers? Yes, it finally happened. After a year of random percentage buffs every patch, Devastation is finally having its time in the spotlight. And it makes sense. Dragon Rage is an incredibly powerful ability on a two minute cooldown, and as we all know, two minute cooldowns are perfect in solo shuffle for momentum and finishing the game on your own. However, thanks to all those 5% buffs to Disintegrate and with the rework to their giant killer mastery, Devastation is no longer a one-trick pony and can finally deal strong, consistent damage. Although, it's not all sunshine and rainbows for Devastation as their passive defensives are still lacking, and just relying on Obsidian Scales and Hover to live means they are still one of the squishiest classes in the game. That's it for the ranged winners, now let's take a look at the ranged losers of the patch. Starting with Elemental Shamans, who despite receiving a strong force at this tier, are moving down from S into the A tier. Although Elemental is still an incredibly strong class in a vacuum, given that it does a great job at countering casters and winning in the late game through instant damage, the other current meta classes just don't allow it to thrive. Ellie got a mix of nerfs and buffs on December 19th, with the nerfs being slightly more impactful. Couple this with the fact that healers will be stronger overall with DPS main stat nerfs, and it becomes hard to argue that Ellie is on the same tier as Destro Warlocks. It's not just the healers that make Elemental Shamans falter though, as most of the high performing DPS at the moment are high uptime melees like Windwalkers, Demon Hunters, and Warriors, making it very hard to survive, and that's not even mentioning how strong rogues are. Moving on, the next ranged loser is Fire Mage, who has also plummeted all the way down from its previous high tier position. Fire Mage started off strong this season, with their mastery build igniting the entire enemy team to death from 50 yards away. Even their haste build was allowing them to dish out strong single target combustions and high impact CC chains with Dragon's Breath Polymorph. No king rules forever though, and thus Blizzard took them out in one fell swoop by nerfing one of their most important talents, Glass Cannon. Although they did try to compensate with other buffs to ignite, fireball, and scorch, the end result is just a mage spec with far less survivability than frost and arcane, while also having far less damage. Moving down to the C tier now, we have the fallen champions of season 2, Augmentation Evokers. 
Throughout the entire expansion, Blizzard have been slowly shifting Augmentation's strength of buffing and healing its team into mostly just buffing and healing itself. They nerfed Ebon Might on teammates, they nerfed the healing of Verdant, and they also reduced how effective blistering scales are. They turned Augmentation into a one-trick burst machine with support as a side feature rather than at the forefront, and with Upheaval being nerfed, it's challenging to even burst properly. Although the Upheaval nerf did come with a buff to Eruption, this consistent damage is just far lower than any other caster, which just begs the question, what is the point of Augmentation Evokers this season? Okay, so to recap, our patch 10.2 range tier list is as follows. Demonology and Destruction Warlocks are leading the charge in the S tier with their strong, consistent, and burst damage, along with the 90% armor buff, allowing them to live far better into melees than before. Along with Beast Mastery Hunters joining them with their deadly mortal strike and unavoidable damage as they safely dance around a pillar. Moving on to the A tier, we have Elemental Shamans who are getting a little countered in the current meta, but are still a very strong class, as well as Frost Mages who are still staying in the A tier despite receiving huge buffs to their Frost Bomb, Ice Lance, and Comet Storm. Although Frost Mages can dish out insane bursts and are very good in melee metas when played to their full potential, lower rated players may struggle to kite efficiently and have an impact on the game when tunneled. Frost Bomb can also be tricky to use, as it can be dispelled if not set up correctly, thus their damage isn't the easiest to get off like the S tier ranged. Arcane Mages are still not budging from the A tier even though they did receive some nerfs to their Temporal Shield and Chrono Shift Sprint. Fortunately for Arcane lovers, this change didn't really impact them too much, and they are actually even stronger than in Season 2 due to their tier set giving them a huge increase on their Arcane Missiles damage. Although Arcane does have a really high potential to be in the S tier, it's just too vulnerable to kicks because of its one school of magic, making it not the most straightforward class to play. Thus, we're keeping it in A for now. Our next A tier class are Boomkins, whose strength is pretty identical to that of Season 2. Cyclone is still a very powerful crowd control, and their damage combined with the potent 2-minute incarnation cooldown is still enough to close out games. But although they're strong, they're not quite moving up into the S tier due to how difficult it can be to kite melees, and their lack of short cooldown interruption when facing specs like Destruction Warlocks can cause a lot of issues. The final A tier class is Devastation, with their increased damage on Disintegrate giving them strong sustain and their mastery rework making them less gimmicky. Dropping down to the B tier now, we have Mark's Hunters. For now, we're going to consider it a sleeper spec and could wind up outperforming this prediction. Despite seeing some buffs in the most recent wave of class tuning, Marks hasn't put up the same sorts of numbers we saw in Season 2 and seems to have some survivability issues in Solo Shuffle. Along with Fire Mages, who have also had their damage heavily gutted, while also being the squishiest of the three mage specializations. Lastly, we have Affliction Warlocks, who received a few quality of life changes in 10.2 such as the Jinx talent applying corruption and agony when using a curse. Affliction also saw some buffs in recent class tuning, but we doubt these will have a noticeable effect on their overall performance, considering the strength and popularity of the high tier melee. And finally, we have the C tier, which is populated exclusively with augmentation evokers. Despite being a staple in Season 2, repeated nerfs have made this spec nearly non-existent in the solo bracket. Now let's get into the melee winners, which we once again predicted pretty well with Unholy Death Knights and Demon Hunters sitting comfortably in the S tier. But what we didn't predict was the rise of the biggest winner, Windwalkers, who received not only a 6% damage buff since the patch hit, but also some overall damage buffs in recent class tuning. Windwalkers are currently absolutely bonkers, hitting for over 250k with a single ability, and with a strong force set to increase their damage and reduce the cooldown of their abilities, their damage never seems to run out. Their damage along with their leg sweep, paralysis, and ring of peace allows them to set up win conditions all on their own, which is perfect for carrying in solo shuffle. Previously, their biggest issue was dying to other melee. However, with the nerfs to Havoc Demon Hunter, they seem to be able to hold their own just a little more now. Moving on to the melee losers, there is one huge outlier that goes against our predictions. Although we previously placed Feral Druids in the S tier, we're going to be dropping them all the way down to B. In the right lobbies, Feral is absolutely S tier. Its damage has the potential to hard carry with huge ferocious bites, and their tier set makes their Feral Frenzy even better than before as they cyclone the whole team. Unfortunately for Feral Druids though, these lobbies only seem to happen in their dreams, as the reality is they are so squishy that every melee and caster tunnels them into the ground, not allowing them to deal any damage, let alone cast a single Cyclone. Ferals can work with good team play and cooldown trading, but Shuffle is just far too random for that to happen off voice consistently. And if you combine that with Feral Defensives which are pretty terrible due to their long cooldowns and weak healing and dampening, you've got a spec that is struggling to make any meaningful impact. Feral did get a minor buff to regrowth healing in the recent wave of class tuning, which definitely helps, but doesn't really target core issues in their survivability. 
The other melee loser are subtlety rogues, who although are incredibly strong, can be very difficult to pull off and shuffle if people don't play according to the sub rogues plan. And now, after some nerfs to eviscerate damage and their tier set, we're placing sub on the A tier. Random diminishing returns flying everywhere, blinds and saps breaking, and teammates bursting the wrong target happen all the time in shuffle, which causes sub rogues to lose far more games than they should. Couple this with the rise of warriors who shut down their goes with intervene, war banner, bladestorm, and stormbolt, and rogues can struggle to get the ball rolling. Outside of these lobbies though, and especially in higher rated lobbies, subtlety rogue is dominating with its crowd control and high burst, as seen by Calvish winning the most recent void tournament for the second time. Okay, so to recap, our melee predictions were on the ball with Demon Hunter and Unholy in the S tier. Despite getting nerfed every week, DH just can't be kept down despite how many times he tweaked the damage percentage numbers. And then we have Unholy Death Knights who are also dealing incredible damage no matter how far they are from their target, along with their high carry potential with CC chains that make even the best subtlety rogues envious. And if that wasn't enough, they still have one of the best slows in the game, Chains of Ice. Then our final S tier melee are Windwalkers, who after getting a 6% damage buff and strong 4 set, have just about everyone re-rolling off their Demon Hunter. Dropping down to the A tier, our predictions are still holding true with Rhett Paladins remaining stagnant with no changes. They're joined by Survival Hunters, who have gained a strong set bonus and still have that huge carry potential with stun trap chains, but are still pretty squishy. As well as all three rogue specs, which can be seen as S tier in some lobbies and in the right hands, but to the general population will cap out at A tier due to the lack of coordination in solo shuffle. The only the only melee we really have overvalued is Arms Warrior, who is still really good but cannot really compare to Demon Hunter or Unholy DK in the current meta. Moving on to the B tier now, we have Feral Druids who fell all the way from S due to how they are about as tanky as a level 1 orc when tunneled. As well as Fury Warriors who although have just received a ton of damage buffs are still seen as too squishy to work in shuffle as their defensives are tied to healing which is not ideal with the quick dampening scaling in solo shuffle. Their utility for their team is also far worse than ARMS, leading them to essentially just being a damage bot that lives and dies by how well Blizzard tunes their abilities. Our final B tier melee are Enhancement Shamans, which as expected are still terrible as they don't have a moral strike or reliable crowd control, meaning they don't have a reliable win condition. Their damage is also mediocre outside of some cheese one-shot builds, and their defensives are healing based, making them worse and worse as the game goes on. Enhanced did see a minor healing buff and some increased spell damage reduction, but we don't expect these will increase their performance dramatically. Lastly, we have the C tier, which is always reserved for the long forgotten specialization of Frost Death Knight. Boasting zero consistent damage, terrible defensives, and a one shot gimmick that doesn't even one shot anymore, this class is in dire need of a rework to be competitive. Now it's time to delve into the world of healer winners, where there is one spec who continues to do well. Their healing is strong, their passive support is stronger, and they have the utility to carry their team to victory. We're of course talking about Restoration Shamans who continue to solidify themselves as a top tier healer, especially now after the recent buffs to healing Tide Totem. With the buffs that Shamans keep receiving to Riptide, Healing Surge, and Healing Stream, it's no wonder the Kings of Utility are in the A tier as they can shut down the enemy team while allowing their party to have far more momentum. Resto Shamans also have a very strong force set that further buffs their Riptide, meaning they very rarely need to cast, giving them more globals to be offensive with lassos, hexes, purges, and static field totems. The other healer winner of the patch are Caster Mistweavers, who are moving up to the A tier from the C tier. Mistweavers are currently fantastic in solo shuffle due to their high healing when they're able to free cast, and the strength of Cocoon and Revival which allow them to save their team in an instant. Mistweavers also have strong crowd control with Leg Sweep and Incapacitate to finish off the game and assist with the win, sometimes even being able to finish off targets with Touch of Death if they can get it to work. Mist Weavers don't quite make it to S tier though as they are still vulnerable to interrupts and purge as well as having to kite very well to survive if tunneled. However, if played to their potential, Mist Weaver can reach very high ranks like Meat Monk winning the most recent shuffle tournament for healers. Now there's no actual healer losers in this patch so we're going to dive straight into the recap with the full healer tier list. To kick things off in the S tier we have Disciplined Priests who are doing incredible healing on 3 schools of magic along with their new powerful cooldown of ultimate penitence allowing them to have yet another life saving button in their kit. Disciplined Priests are not only doing large healing though as their damage is also sky high and they tend to perform very well on mana as well giving this specialization really no weaknesses in the current meta. The second S tier healer is the former King of Season 2, Restoration Druids, whose Torrents and Tree Form are still providing exceptional healing throughput. Resto Druids are also doing the most damage we've seen from them in years with Instant Wraths and Star Surges, while empowered by their Call of the Elder Druid and Master Shapeshifter talents. 
And who could forget their roots, cyclones, and vortexes that are perfect for shutting down all the melee in this meta. Despite receiving numerous nerfs, Resto Druids are still out healing most other healers, thus maintaining their S tier spot. Moving on to the A tier, we have the rising Restoration Shamans who have been buffed repeatedly throughout the season and are reaping the rewards of their four set, giving them strong instant healing which allows them to focus on their disruptive kit. Next, we have Casted Mistweaver whose high healing and strong defensives allow their team to stay aggressive in the fight. Along with Fist Weavers whose only real downside is the RNG of Shuffle giving them poor lobbies where they can easily be crowd controlled. Despite some concerns from the community and some recent mana nerfs, we will also be moving Paladin up to the A tier. In both regions, this spec is simply outperforming our initial predictions. Despite some defensive nerfs in 10.2, Holy Paladin healing seems in a decent spot, especially after repeated nerfs to some of the high damaging melee. Moving on to the B tier, we have Holy Priests. While their defensive and CC kits are really good, the spec is definitely outpaced by Disc in the head-to-head. -head. Holy doesn't make it to the high tiers, as their healing is far lower than any of the other specs up there, causing them to be overwhelmed in dampening. And finally, we have Preservation Evokers, who have weak healing, practically no damage reduction abilities for their team, and have to play at a very awkward range, making them susceptible to swaps and crowd control. Although Preservation can dish out huge damage and help their team offensively, if this hyper aggro playstyle doesn't work out, they will often just lose in early dampening. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where Rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skill Cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. Alright guys, that's it for this update on the Solo Shuffle meta. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.